But Finn Russell is comfortably, if he's not the best, he's in the top couple of players. Picasso didn't let a four-year-old colour in the rest of his artwork, did he? Oh, brilliant from Russell. I love seeing a quick tap like that. Finn Russell, and he is, a, he, he, he sells tickets, doesn't he? Ginty. Honestly, he was rather on his heels, and um, Russell there comfortably in and the bounce of the ball, and Russell will gather all his own work. Finn Russell. <laughs> White's got it, Russell's called for it, Russell, Russell, out the back of the hand, Kyle Stain scores. Murrayfield in raptures. Russ in growing in confidence, Russell has the confidence and the skill set and the pass, what an absolute cracker. That time there was a bit of an issue, oh he's passed through. Johnson, Sam Johnson, going for gold. Can he get there? He can. Incredible. Look at this from Finn Russell. He does it with the eyes. Nathan Hughes fights in. There are a couple of holes there. They on. Quick tap. They take it and away they go. Catching them napping. Russell. And the penalty is going to go against the Wallabies and it's going to be a yellow card. You remember and want to forget. Think over the top from Russell, that's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful by Finn Russell. And as Teddy Thomas back inside to Teddy Thomas, and this is going to be a belter of a try. Carl oh, Dixon, a former scrum half, he's not going to buy the uh, fun that's had there, but the offload goes to Tilly Pernotti. They need to play the whistle here. They've got a freebie, will they go to the air? Lovely, wonderful. Oh, Finn, special. good to see you, mate. And you, mate? Uh, looking slightly less tan than I saw you last time. I know, I've been back that... here for a few weeks now, so... I oh, know. Back with a France here enough, though. Quickly touch on it. I know we're going to talk about the World Cup a lot, but the first thing, there has been a, a few changes in your life recently. Obviously, a beautiful little girl who, by the way, is your spitting image. <laughs> Slightly worried for her. I hope she turns more like Emma. I know. As she goes on. How's that been? It's been good, it's been good. Everyone has given her that compliment of looking really beautiful, being a, like, very cute, but also looking much like me. So I'm, I'm, I'm taking it all as a compliment. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. Right um, but that's no, been good. It's different, obviously. Um, as you know, you've got four, but it's like it comes in waves, sort of thing. Like a few weeks will be good, then it'll be back to broken night sleeps or crying or whatever. But yeah. it's good fun. Like I suppose the change in, in life's been really good fun. Um, and you just have to kind of get through it. You know, even when it's tough, you just have to get on with it. It's just how it is. So like, you wait, can't wait really do anything. Full. You know. Huh? Wait till you have I know. <laughs> that's uh, that's so, when the hard work goes. And no, then obviously good. a big move recently in terms of your rugby stuff. Been at Rathen for a fair while now, and you're over to Bath. Yeah. So How did that come about? Uh, well, I was five years in France, um, and I really wanted to stay, and it just didn't, it didn't really work out. I think, the, well, the new coach coming in. I don't know if you had a, I don't know, an opinion on, on who he wanted to stay, who wanted to leave, and um, I probably didn't have my best season in 2021, 22. So I think that kind of rubbed off, and um, on the negotiations a little bit. But I, I was really keen to stay, but now. That I've left to go to Bath, I'm actually really happy that I have. Um, bit of a change, yeah. A change, but it probably give me, uh, give me like a little bit of time to reflect in the five years, because if not, you know, you'll know from being at Glasgow for so long, it goes by so quickly. I could have just spent the rest of my career at Racing, which would have been great, but um, I think going to England will be a new challenge, something different, and having the change just now, it's actually allowed me to look back at the last five years and appreciate how much I enjoyed it and how fun it was. So You look like you enjoyed it, mate. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. And then those things have changed. Obviously, you've gone to Bath. House sorted, the mansion sorted. How many bedrooms? I wouldn't say a mansion, only four. Not like your six bedroom in France. Um, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's get on to my stuff. But, um, Bath will be exciting, though. Yeah, right? I think it'll be awesome. I've put a good team together. I've spoke to Yuan quite a bit. Um, and then Lee Blackett that's coming in. I caught up with them a few weeks ago. So um, we're kind of we're on the same page already for the attacking side. And like I say, Yuan seems like a good man. So um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And chatting to the boys who are in the camp. Who are at Bath? Um, they sort of talk it all up. So it's a good group of boys, um, good facilities. That's a lovely place to live. I think I don't really know Bath, but everyone says how nice it is a place to live, and it's a proper rugby town, which would be different to Paris or Glasgow, you know. So um, yeah, I'm really looking forward. Right? You're not going to yeah. be able to get in trouble there, mate. Now I've got a little one. I'll be all right. So I was with someone over there, and he said, "I think Tom Whitford's moved into Finland." Yeah, no. I said, well, I, make sure you check down the back of the sofa <laughs> for any stacks of euros. <laughs> <laughs> no, he came and viewed it. Um, I think with the schools that are close by and with him having kids, it didn't, didn't work out. It's uh, another player that's taken it on, like uh, a younger boy, so he'll, uh, he'll enjoy it, he's I think. So. 
Yeah. Oh, you, I only know him from being, well, being a France player against Montpellier, chatting to him there, and then when he moved to Racing, I caught up with him a couple of times. Um, seems like a nice guy, though. Yeah, he's a good farmer, man. Um, right, World Cups, moving on to it. Before we go on to this World Cup, it's just around the corner, it's, what, two or three weeks away, let's just briefly touch on the one that we spent a bit of time together at, 2019 World Cup. On and off the field, firstly, let's start on the field. It wasn't the best, was it? Uh, nah, I think it was well, a poor World Cup, wasn't it? Um, if you compare it to the 2015 one before that, when we did, like, so we got to the quarters and did so well in that quarter, we probably should have won it. To then the 2019, um, the performances on the pitch were very different. Um, and I think I've chatted to a few folks saying that the probably the environment, the group environment, was very different then to what it is now and what it was in 2015. Yeah. Um, I think it was, yeah. I think. Reckon you're tighter as a squad now than you were back in, we were back in 2019. Though. I would definitely say so. I think as a squad we're really tight, and as management and players it's much tighter as well. Yeah. Um, That's important. Isn't it? I f- yeah, I think 2019 there was probably a bit of a disconnect between the players and the management and everything that was going on, which then probably led on to the the performances that we're having on the pitch, um, which is you know it's not great, but these things happen. I suppose you know you see teams go through. You know, let's say sort of depth or sort of tough periods quite often, you know. Yeah. Like, there's a couple of teams that we can name now that are going through a tough kind of period, you know. Who's that then? <laughs> I don't know, I just heard that. They might do, yeah. End with a land, yeah. England. Um, but um, yeah. these things happen, I suppose, and I think from four years ago, 2019, to where we are now, we've come on a lot. Yeah. Um, the style of play has changed, like I say, the the environment, the vibe in camp is very different, and that's not just players, that's players and coaches and everyone together, so. Um, it's, look, it's like feeling good going into the World Cup. You talk, you talk about obviously that not being the greatest World Cup. That was in terms of Scotland's World Cup. I mean, the yeah. whole everything around Japan in 2019 was incredible. Yeah, it was a awesome. A little bit about the off-field there. Yeah, I, I absolutely loved it. <laughs> Again, we probably kicked the ass out of it a bit too much, and it'd be slightly different in France. But that, the whole the whole event over there in 2019 was brilliant. Wasn't it? Yeah, I'd never been to to Japan before. Did you go there four yeah, years I'd, before I'd that? Been or? there four years before, and I did a under 20s World Cup there yeah. as well. So I'd never been there, so it was all new for me. Um, I think it was awesome. Like even the the way of transport around the the country was really good with the trains. Yeah, the um, I think it's just such a different like um, such a different culture and lifestyle over there that it's obviously different when you're in camp. You've got a day off and you're usually travelling, or you can't do that much. But I loved seeing it and seeing this kind of lifestyle, the way of of living in Japan and not being part of it, but. You can embrace it, and like you say, outside of the pitch and outside of the training, it was really good fun. Um, so yeah, I, I liked it. We did like it. We <laughs> did enjoy it. We won't go into too much detail because I know you could get in trouble. Um, going just quickly then on Japan, it's almost like people have written them off for this World Cup. No one's talking about them, even though they did so well at the last World Cup. They ended up beating us and going through mm-hmm. to the quarterfinals. Suddenly, I mean, no one's talking about them, but they're in a pool with. England they or are they in, are England or Wales? Indians? Yeah, I think they're in, in a pool with England. It's, it's either England, Argentina, and Japan. I think it is. England, Fiji. It's England, Fiji. So it'll be uh, Wales, Australia, Wales, Australia, Australia, and Japan. Okay, and Japan, so yeah. Go about that then. Why are people not talking about Japan? Is that dangerous? <sighs> I've not seen enough of them because you know last World Cup we'd obviously looked at their games, their results. I've not looked at them much obviously this time because we're not playing them, but. I think they got beaten quite badly by Samoa, and they've not performed that well. I don't think any. Anyway, I've, I've not been following it at all, um, but I've seen a few results come through. Um, yeah, I think it's just it's, with the Jap- like the World Cup in Japan, they're obviously going to be up there to to do well in front of a home crowd and everything. And yeah. I think, like you say, they're getting maybe overlooked here, but you never know what to expect from them. No, especially like, we've put against them a few times. Yeah, we've put against them a few times. They're always really fit, good skills. Um, they're re- really well structured, so you almost don't really know what to to expect for them. And in a World Cup, all it takes is one one good game, and that can get you out of the group. So that's yeah. Who knows? I mean, look at our group. Like Sione was saying, you know, you just you get hot for a couple of games, and that that takes you through the quarters, and then from there on, it's knockout rugby. So for Japan, you never know they get hotter for a couple of games, and and they're through into the quarters. You never know who they'll face. Could be England or Argentina, maybe Fiji that they face in that. So. <laughs> That's easier. Easier. A lot sure. easier. A yeah. lot easier. Before we get on to our group, I'm quickly touch on the warm-ups. Um, you've obviously been training over in Nice. How's that been? 
I only did a week there. The boys have done two weeks there. Um, and that's where you're based, right? For yeah, World Cup. just uh, next to Valbon, outside Antibes and Cannes. So. Yeah, how close is the heliport to get to Monaco? Uh, probably about half an hour, I think. So a bit further than I'd like, but. Tell me, you went to Monaco when you went down there. I did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course, you did. Only because my little brother's living there. Yeah, so. oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I so, think I did see Yeah, yeah. Stuff. Only because he's there. Oh, so. so he had a little trip down to yeah, Monaco. Yeah, so. Helicopter or just? Nah, just I have just a taxi. Yeah. Oh right. Okay. So, I was going to get the train, but then I'd have to get a half an hour train into Nice to then get up the road. So right, okay. I thought so it was any, easier. Any, but anyone with a helicopter out there, you'll be down there. Yeah. A, trip a, a few folk will be giving my shout, see if they can land it close to the, the hotel. And uh, yeah, so you've trained out there, a little bit of hot weather training back here, and then obviously two, the two that stick out for me, those two French games. Yeah. So close, come from behind to. Come Winning from. one, losing one by three points, and I think it's it's funny because in the first game we gave away a soft try and counter attack, and then just before the half time, you know we had a line out in their twenty two, we got held up in that. They got penalties from the scrum, penalty line out, penalty the next line out, and score before the half time. Yeah. So it's. It's kind of like small, for a fine margin, you know, then we can compound the errors. So the first one, obviously, off the kick return, they cut us open and scored. Then that, just before half time, we could potentially get a penalty or a try there. But instead, it's then gone down the other end and they've scored off the back of it, which is a big swing before half time. Um, and then the France away game, you know, I think three minutes after the half time, they scored two tries in three minutes or something. So it's sort of small windows that are kind of letting us down. Um, but it must have given the boys some confidence. I mean, especially that second game. No, no, that was a. Pretty stacked French squad. Yeah, they're going to th- go into this home World Cup, and you I give think them a run for yeah, them I think it, it gives us it gives us confidence, but it still shows that we need to keep getting better. We're not obviously good enough to beat these teams. Oh, we, we can, but we can't just expect to beat them. We know yeah, we've got yeah. to be good at every moment of the game. You know, we can't give them a five minutes when we switch off and then to score two tries. Um, so I think although it did give us a lot of confidence the way that we played, the way that we came back in these games, it still it still showed that we've got a lot to work on. Part of it's the mental side because I think physically and uh, physically and skill skill wise we're there. Well, you're not blo- you not got bloody long, mate. There's only about three weeks. You have got one game left against <laughs> Georgia tomorrow. It's just the mindset. We just need to change that a little bit, and we'll be right. Again, a loss isn't always the worst thing before a World Cup. Yeah. Because you're not getting too ahead of yourself. You're not thinking you're you're going in there guaranteed to get out of the groups. You know that loss, although we played really well and took confidence from it, it still shows that we need to work and we need to still adapt a few things, change a few things to be at a better level going into this World Cup. Which one did you captain? Because obviously we're both unbeaten. The one we won. We're both unbeaten Scotland yeah, captains. that is true. How many games have you been captain for? One. And that, I think I was one. <laughs> yeah, one, one and done. Warm up. So one and done, but no one can take it away uh-huh. from us. That's it. Unbeaten Scotland captains. Well, at half time heard. of that game, well, I think we were like 18 points down and I was thinking, oh no, this is going to be a 40 point loss. The first time as captain, that'll be the end of it. Um, but the boy, no, we turned it around and got that win, which is great. And Once a captain, you know, Captain for one game and got a win. Well, that's it. Against number two team in the world, so it's not bad. Um, In camp, who were the big characters at the moment? Like, I think it was back in the days when we were in, like, there was. I always. I I guess it's the guys I hung around with, so Sean Maitland, Mm -hmm. Grieg, Big Jim when he was about. Who are the characters now in the squad that, when you go away, because it's a long old World Cup, you're Mm -hmm. away for a long time, away from family and stuff, and I know it'll be a bit easier because you're in France, so they can jump over there. I know your mum and dad will definitely be down there. Yeah. But you need the big characters in the squad, yeah. who are they? I think, you know, like I was saying earlier, everyone's a lot tighter, so... In the team room, there's always boys there playing cricket or whatever they're doing, having a laugh and stuff. Cricket's been a big game, actually, just now. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the big characters, there would be... You know, Sony's one of them, he's up there trying to play cricket. Oh Shuggy's up there playing cricket quite a lot. George Horn's obviously up there playing cricket and Steno. So there's a good group of boys that are always in that team room playing playing cricket or whatever. You're good to see you've just named the Glasgow boys as well. Yeah, it's just, that's what they're like. They just stick together. They don't like to interact with other boys. Not very you good just teammates. Told us it's but so tight, mate. You can't be them. <laughs> no, nah. well, they're the boys that are kind of in the team remote. Well, Blue Kinghorn, he's there quite a bit. Oh yeah. He, he's so a big in terms he's of big, in, in terms, in terms of big or characters in the team, you'd have Blair, Jack Dempsey, Sione, um, Duan. Yeah. He's a character. You maybe not his biggest fan, but. No, we're <laughs> <laughs> we're all right. Oh, yeah. Listen, it was just a little bit of training, <laughs> and I used to wind him up in yeah. games, but we're all right now. Remember that try he scored against France? My 50th cap. Oh, where it, I think uh, it was Hayes, they threw it over the to top. To win the game. He scored, and yeah, I went yeah. and celebrated with him. I said, I love you really, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I love you really. <laughs> oh, no, um, so he's a character. Um, Scoomy, he's a big character, actually. Yeah. Um, I didn't really know him before he also came and played Scotland stuff, but he's a, a funny guy. His brother's at Bath. But all the boys from Bath say that his brother's completely different to him. 
Oh, really? So I, I don't know his brother, but I'll, so hopefully I'll try and get the, the PR screaming out on him rather than the other yeah. side, because Scooby's a funny guy. No, nah, he is a good bloke. Really um, good bloke. Even after all our battles and yeah. some of the words we've exchanged in the Edinburgh Glasgow battle. Yeah. So let's go on to the first game. Obviously, South Africa. <sighs> Mate, I, I'm optimistic. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to win. I, I've, I've got a feeling that we win that first game and then it's all to play for. You've got to have the same feeling. I know sometimes players are hesitant coming out going, oh, we can win the World Cup. So obviously mm. the goal is to win the World Cup. Yeah. Everyone's goal is to win the World Cup. But take it step by step. South Africa, yeah. I think how did you beat them? As much as the goal is to win the World Cup, like you say, you've got to take it game by game to get out of the groups to then Especially see what happens. Yeah. Um, South Africa, you know, they are, well, they won it last time, didn't they? So they're obviously a world-class team. They know how to perform in these tournaments and how to win games, how to win the tournaments. Yeah. Um, but I think we're going there um, to play against them. We're just going to keep playing the style of rugby that we've got just now, which is a very fast, expansive game. We do have the power in the forwards, but that's probably their strength, so we might try and keep it away from that. Um, their strength, obviously, the kicking game, the balls in the air, going set piece to set piece. Yeah. Um, so I think we'll try and try and stay away from that. It's not always easy. And then just discipline against them. You know, if they get into your 22, same as Ireland, they're so hard to stop. So if we almost limit the amount of times they can get into our 22 then we sort of limit the amount of points they can potentially score um, but you know I think two years ago two and a half years ago we played them in November um, and I think we were ahead at 60 minutes maybe and then their bench came on got three jackal turnovers and that was the game they kicked nine points and took it away from us they're the sort of no, team that if they it, yeah they're the sort of team that know if they get ahead they know how to shut games down um, so as long as we can stay in the game then I, I would back our fitness to the show at the end, like the two fans games that we've just seen. And then move on down the road to Nice, where you're going to be getting helicopters out of Monaco, forward and backwards. Tonga there, a completely different Tongan team to any World Cup going into it, with some of the players got on there. Good teammate of mine, well, ex-teammate, I'm retired, I've stopped. Big Don't nons. still play. Yeah, big uh, Sione Vatalano. Um, they're going pretty well. Could be something that we've got to be careful about, but Back to them and do the job down in Nice. Yeah, but I think they've been again. They're kind of been overlooked because it's Tonga. You, people who aren't who aren't following it are maybe thinking, oh, the, the Scotland should beat them or yeah. the other teams should beat them. But with the players that they've brought back to play and like the, the X factor they've got, they're going to be a tough team to beat. You know, they've got some good forwards as well. Like you're saying, that Sione from Glasgow. If he's number eight. All the boys talk about how powerful, how good a ball carrier is. They've got that Adam Coleman, is it? Yeah. They've got him back. They've got Ben Tamarfuna for the scrums. Big ben. Big ben. So they have. They've got that Fabita as well. So they've yeah. actually got a really stacked team. Yeah, um, it just depends if they can put it together. Um, I've kind of looked at a few of their results, but they've been changing the team every week. So the results probably haven't gone their way in the, the sort of Pacific Nations uh, Championship, is it? I think. Yeah, yeah. Or uh, not NPC? Is that it? Uh, I'm not sure. Anyway, what they call and, that yeah, and, and, and the, in the Pacific Nations Cup. That might be it. Is they're not their warm ups? It's not just their warm ups. But no, they had the P yeah, they had that as well. PNC. I think it's Pacific PNC. Nations Cup. Um, that, the Pacific Nations Cup. I think that's what it is. Make it um, <laughs> and um, so they didn't win that many games there, but they kept changing the team every week. So I don't know if they're trying to get the combinations right so that when they come into the World Cup, they know exactly who they're going to start, who they're going to play, and how they're going to play. So yeah. I think although the last few games. Like I said, the results might not have gone their way, but I'm not looking at the results too much in terms of how hard they're going to be. Well, I've got you down to beat them, so don't worry. <laughs> no pressure. Lille, was that where you played France over there recently? No, we put them in St. Uh, St. Etienne. Okay, so is, is that where you're playing Romania in Lille? Yeah, up just past Paris. So you're up that way and you play Romania. We'll skirt over that one because that's going to be an easy win, isn't it? Uh, I'd like to hope so. Like we had Russia in the last World Cup and that turned out to be a comfortable win, but depending this tournament, how how our game against South Africa goes, our game against Tonga, I think Ireland, South Africa maybe play before we play Romania, that could then depend on the team that he picks, because you, you might be going into that game thinking we just score as many points as possible, yeah. if it does get down to a points difference in the, in the end. Yeah, so, yeah. although that's a game that, that should be again. easier, that could be a game that we've got to prop, like turn it on more than other games to get as many points as possible before going into the Ireland game. That Russia game, do you remember Barks in the change room in his full Russian kit afterwards? He actually looked like a Russian player as well. I think we gave him a Russian name. So. And then, obviously, the huge one right at the end, up at Stade de France against Ireland, which I don't know why I'm writing this Africa off, but by the end, with like injuries, a long old campaign to go and play yeah. Ireland, who have got so much depth in their team. I'm not saying we haven't, but they've got unbelievable depth yeah. and people who just slot into that system that they run. 
that's a tough old game. So yeah. that's why we need the win right at the beginning against South Yeah, Africa. I think that, that first game against South Africa is probably the most important. Um, you know, if we do get out to a win and then back up with two more wins, then we go into that Ireland game, either, like I'm saying, go down to points difference if we are to lose it or go in there. And, you know, they might be qualified, we might have qualified by then, or they might be knocked out. We've qual- You know, you never know what's going to happen. If you can win the first three games, then go into that fourth game, you know exactly what you need to do, um, which will change might change tactics but I'd imagine we'd still want to win that game no matter what um, however like you say they've got the you know, number one team in the world they've not I don't know when they lose a game they to lose one of the Six Nations against someone don't know, maybe I don't know um, but like, you know they're number one in the world for a reason so they, look, they played against England at the weekend comfortably well, they they be, the beat them slam, didn't they? they might have done they got the Grand Slam yeah I think maybe maybe yeah mate we don't know anything about rugby do we <laughs> that's terrible <laughs> but um, you know they come to one against England at the weekend they've won other warm up games who had I can't think they play Italy tomorrow or someone like that. Yeah, one Japan maybe. Japan, I think. They play Japan. Yeah. There um, are, and then we'll be able to see where Japan are. Uh huh. So, I think they've obviously had a good, you know, not just one year. They've had a good three or four years since the last World Cup. They've never got past the quarters. I don't think in a World no, Cup. They but if there's a year that they can do that and get get further up, then this would be their year, I think. So, um, but again, that's that's the last game out the out the four. So. There's no point looking onto that and what we need to do there if we, we don't get it right in the first two or three games. No, too right. And uh, I saw something today, break the eight, I think they're calling it. The most tries scored by one person at the single World Cup is eight. Reckon Dewey, Staino, Das, one of the boys well, break that. I th- Dewey and Das. Oh, they've been talking about it, pretend they have been talking about it. Not not that, but they've not been talking about breaking the eight, but they've been talking about breaking Hoggy's record during the World Cup. Ooh, okay. So they're only, I think, I think Das is eight or nine tries behind Hoggy and Dewey's... Nine or ten or one, do he's one less than Darcy, but they're not far off Hoggy's record already. So they reckon they're going for Hoggy's record and Ho- breaking the eight at the same time, then? Hopefully. So if, you know, we've got we, we've, we've, we've got Georgia this weekend, do he's already seen he's a hat trick. Oh. And I'm thinking, all right, they'll sort that out if you don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he's already saying I need, I need tries. Do he, Darcy scored two or three in the summer there. Um, do he's only got one, so we were winding him up about does he even know how to, rem- does he even remember how to score a try? So he's saying he's at least three this weekend, so we'll see if he, if he does. Um, but I think there's games in the World Cup that the wingers could score a few tries. So I think that could be a chance for them to, you know, I think Hastel and George probably got hat-tricks each against Russia last World yeah, Cup. Yeah, yeah, they did, you're right. So did. against these games, for someone like Dewey, you know, like he could look at the try score against England, the Six Nations, you know. He'll be desperate to play against And he'll be desperate, I think, desperate to play every game, but... The score tries, you'll see him definitely trying to get the end of things. I think you'll probably see him work harder than he ever has done just to get the end of things. Are you just going to be waiting to pull the pin and then just not giving it? That's it. I'll try and get, I don't know, quite a few assists in these games to, to get that start up. I'm not, I think they could probably get more tries in this World Cup than I've had in the 72 games or 71 games for Scotland. Well, you get more than I had at 50. <laughs> I didn't score a try. <laughs> I think Ross Ford is like 100th uh, cap, 100 game, 102nd cap, he got his first try. Selfless, mate. Selfless well, that's back. it. That's, that's Just setting the boys up, making for. other boys look good, that's my job. Um, so. Forget about the forwards, because the forwards are so boring. Back That back line for Scotland, most exciting it's ever been. How good is it having those guys outside you, especially with the centres? I know we'll talk about everyone in the squad, but for me at the moment, with Shuggy and, and Sione in the centres, Having those two outside you with the boys we just spoke about on the wings, let's just stick with those four for now. Yeah, I think oh, it's amazing for me to have these boys outside. Like, I think maybe in the past when I first started coming through, you'd be, I'd be trying to create things and do stuff to, to unlock defences. Whereas with these boys, I just need to do my job to get them the ball and allow them to create the space for yeah. others. Obviously, we'll link you know closely together through the shapes that we run. But a lot of the time, it's me just giving it to Sione letting Shuggy run that down line which he scores plenty of tries off makes plenty of line breaks sucks right. the defence and I'm out the back I can then give Duan that ball and he can walk it in, in the corner so I think, it's, uh-huh. I think it makes it it doesn't make it easier for me because then my job slightly changes but it just means I don't have to be looking for as many different options and um, they've got their comms they're chatting to me about what they want me to do and the options that they're seeing in front of me which just makes it so easy for me just to focus on what a 10 would do instead of trying to organise everything out there. Yeah, you need um, I think having Blair at 15 as well, he's a second ball player, he's been, we've actually linked really well, he's a powerful runner, he's like 6 foot 5 or something and 105, 6 kilos and he's, you know, he plays 10 as well so having that second ball player there has been really good actually. Uh, how much does he look like McLovin though? <laughs> <laughs> he looks an axe. 